So let's create a table so we can add users for now. Now, this is not really the, uh, the table we're going to use finally. We just want something to test our database reading uh, skills here. So what we're going to do is create a users table. So we'll come here and say create table. We'll click on our database. So first of all, go to localhost slash PHP my admin. Make sure your Apache is running. Okay. And then click on type localhost slash PHP my admin. Click on your database name and then let's create a table. We'll create the users table. We'll leave the number of columns at four for now because you can always add more columns, it's up to you. So you can click go here to add more columns. You can choose how many to add and click go to add here. But first let's add the ID, which is always needed as a primary key. Let's click on auto increment here, boom, and make sure primary key is accepted here. So auto increment means every time we add a row, it adds an automatic ID there. That's always better so that every row is unique and we can read from it because this will act as its address. That's why we are putting this as a primary key. That's the primary address. Now here we're going to have username or let's try email and password. So the password will be variable character. So varchar, same as email. The longest email I'm sure can be summarized in 100 characters, so let's put 100. The password though can go to 255 characters, so let's put that there just to be safe. And uh, that's really it. Now if we want we can put a date here, that's up to us. Let's try date. Now if you know that an item, let's, let me put date here, where is that date? If you know that an item might be empty when you are creating this row, make sure you select no here or you give it a default value of your own you can define one and just type something that you want to be the default value or you can select no here which will make sure that it's it can be allowed to be empty otherwise you won't be able to save anything if for example i don't set this to allow no values uh here and then i don't provide a value for email the insertion of data will fail. The whole row will not be inserted. So here I know that I must have an email and I must have a password. So this is a must and a row should not be added if these two do not exist. So this is fine. I won't tick here and an ID will be added automatically. So you don't need to specify the length for int because it already knows that it's 11, I think and variable character can be any value so you have to specify date also it knows how long a date should be so no need to specify so from this we are done let's hit save so it's telling me invalid default value for date really oh yes because i've said undefined and uh, defined so i'll leave it at none and say no and save okay so now it's happy that's good all the things that you need to use when you are um, reading from the database it's a good idea to put an index so it's faster to read the majority of the work that your database uh, queries will be is the select statement it's very rare that you add a new record very rare that you update a record but every time you load your your, your website you are reading from the database so it's better to optimize for reading than writing because you're doing more of reading otherwise your website will be slow um, it's better people complain that when updating data it's slow than they complain that reading data is slow. So in here what we will do is we'll add an index on the email. So let's click index here and add that. So we are increasing the size of the database because we are telling it to save extra data that will allow it to read faster when reading from the email column. We want to need to search by password, so no need to add an index there, otherwise we'll make the database unnecessarily big. You may need to search by date, so you can put an index there as well if you wish. Now, once you're done with this, um, somebody could destroy or you could have uh, this PHP my admin, your computer could crash and then you won't know what tables you had created for your project. So it's a good idea to save the create statement. So here let's go to table structure and then let's go to here where is this 
no actually not here let's click on the database itself and then we have this users table let's select it and here with selected let's click and say show create so from this it will show you the create query that was run because the thing here is even if as i'm even when i'm clicking buttons here it's actually running queries to return these results because everything we do here can be done using a query alone we don't actually need to click buttons here we can do it via query so here it's telling me the query that was run to create this table so i'm going to copy this and copy Let's come to our database function here. Let's create one more function here that will store this information. So let's say function create tables. Okay. So this is just going to be a function that will hold the information. Uh -huh. So here we'll say users table like that. So comment that there. And we'll say query. Let's call it a query is equal to and then let's put our quotations and then let's paste our information here uh -huh. let's move it a bit further here so it's nice and clean alrighty then so you see this is our query that can be run in order to create our users table now the thing is if the table already exists it's not a good idea to create the table again it will cause an error anyway so it's better to put an if statement. So let's say create table if not exists. Don't forget the S there. Okay, so create table if not exists users. And then this is how the things are set up. So you can add extra uh, columns here if you want, that's up to you. Uh, and then primary key ID, this is a key and that's another key. And then the engine here pretty straightforward then once we're done with this we can just say uh, run a query yes we can say this because we are already in the database uh, uh, class so we don't need to instantiate it from within itself because that will create an infinite loop of instantiations so we're just calling it and say this uh, we want to run this function that runs a query yes yes so this query and then we supply our query that's what we really need to supply because the rest of these uh, items have default values which are okay for now. So this query. So what this means is that if we run this function, we are going to create the users table. Now let's move this to public so we can run it from outside. It depends what you want to do if you want to be able to run it from the outside. Now, this is harmless. If I try to run this while the table exists, it won't do anything because of the if statement and won't create any errors. But if the table does not exist, this is a good idea. So let's test it, right? I'm going to go to the Udemy thingy here. And um, what I'll do is I'm going to drop this table. So stra table structure. So I've clicked on the database and drop that table. Okay, let's come back here. And now let's try to run this. So we've deleted all the work that we did. So right now our database has zero tables. So let's try and run this and recreate the table. So what I'll do is write, I can do this anywhere. So I want to do this on the home page in the home controller because I know this will run, right? So we've created a new database here and then there's db query but instead of db query let's run db create tables that's what we run there so you see there's no table here now if i refresh my home page and come back here and check here you see that now we have a new table which is exactly what we had created if i go to the structure you see there it is everything is back so this is a simple way to make sure that you don't lose your tables when you want and you can restore them anytime now if i try to run this again it won't cause any problems as you can see if i refresh nothing because it checks if the table exists before trying to do anything if the if not exists did not exist let's, let's remove it and try yeah you can't really break your computer so let's just try these things and there we go so we get 
an error that says best table already exists, you don't say. Okay, copy there, undo, and then we are back to normal. Boom. Okay, so that is good. Now we can create more tables like this, and that will be great. So now that we know the table exists, we can add some information in that table, uh, which is uh, a simple thing to do. Okay, so let's add some information so we can read from it. Now I can add information in many ways. One way is to just go directly here and go to browse and then say insert. And then I can put an email here. Maybe let's do that. So I'll put uh, email at email.com. But you can do this using a query as well. The password will be password. And the date, it allows a no value, so that's okay. But we can click and create today's date, which is 20th, is it? And then I'll hit go. The, the, the ID will be created on its own. So now it shows you the query that was run in order to create your row. So you can even copy this query and reuse it later on. Okay, very good. That way, if there was nothing in the database, you can add a default uh, record there. So if I go to browse, and this is what I get. So now I just want to see if we can read from the database. So from here, all I'm going to do is say query and then put a query here, which is select everything or columns from users, the users table. And then here, I want this result. This result, I will just call it res. And I want to show this result using our show function. So select all, every result will be put there. Then we can show it here and come back and refresh. And there we go. So you see, we got an array of arrays. If there were many records, that would be here. Another array, another array, like this. So this is an array. That's the result we get. But wait a minute, I wanted an object, no? So let's come back here and see what's going on. So type is object. So we are saying type is equal to obj, but if type, which is this one, is not equal to object, which it is, if it's not equal to object, then let's do that. Hmm. Okay, so we are changing if type is not object, but right now it is an object. So this is false. So why am I getting, hmm, this is, uh, this is not cool at all. Okay, what I'll do is let me show what type is just to make sure that type is correct here. Type is two. Two is not object, is it? No, it is not. Okay, let me copy what object is here and try to show it. Because uh, I, I didn't explain this, but this is a constant. So it looks very strange, but it's just that inside the PDO class, there's a constant named fetch asoc. There's another constant named fetch object. And these constants are equal to a number, an integer, one, two, three, four, to determine what to load. But it's difficult to remember numbers. Say number one is for object, number two is for array. So instead, that's why they use this text, but it's later converted to an integer anyway. So let's see what integer object is. Integer is, object is five. So, and then array is two, I guess. Let's see that. Ah, right. So there's a reason this, for some reason, it's getting here as an array. Okay, so I'm saying type is a good object. Let me do this. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now it gives me an object, which, what I, which is what I want. So it means this is running here against my will. But why? Type here is equal to object, isn't it? Yes, because that's the default value. Type object. So if type is not equal to object. Hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the problem here because I'm setting type to something else. See there? 
which means it is equal to your object. Okay. So I'm setting type to a number. So it means it's not object. So ugh, my bad. So I should put an if else statement instead. I was trying to be clever here and save uh, save space, but it doesn't seem to be doing me much good. So let's do it this way instead. So let's just say if it's equal to object, let's put object there. If it's not, let's put the associative array on the other side. Oh my God. There we go. So if type is equal to object, if not array. So refresh. So now I get an object as a result, but if I come back to home, here where I put my query and then I put an empty object because I need to put type is all, all the way over there. I need to supply this before I can supply that. Otherwise this will be mistaken for that. So I'll put the same default, but then put array on the end. So here I'll do that and say call array. That way I'm telling it to return an array instead. So if I refresh, see now it's an array. So depending on your preference, you can change those things. If I do that, the default is object. If you want the default to be array, then just put array there. Alrighty then. So it can read from the database. That is good. It can also write, I guess. So that is good. So now the thing is, I want to avoid making queries like this. I want to be able, I don't even want to do this. I want to abstract these things to a level where, uh, for example, I'll just say user, users, and then do this and say insert like that. Okay. And then here I'll just put some data, an array of information. Let's say the username, the password and all that. This is all I need. I want to be able to do when I want to insert an item in the database, right? I'll say something like users is equal to new user and then insert. That's what I want to be able to do. Okay, so we'll be able to do this. This will tell the, um, the website that I'm creating a new user. This is a model, a new user model. And if you remember, models connect to the database. So it's going to connect to the user's database, this one right here. So I'm creating a new instance and then I'm telling it that the same users insert this data. So here I avoid typing a query of any kind. So on its own, it's going to check what data is given in here and then save it in the database. It will create a query on its own and save it in the database and make sure all the columns exist. Everything will be handled by the model itself. All I need to do is this. This will limit the amount of code I need to type in the controller here in order to do a, an operation like this, where normally I would have to check the columns, I would have to uh, create a query, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll get to this part, and once we do that, then we have a working um, uh, framework. But for now, even though it's not a complete framework, we can start doing the fun part, which is adding some visuals to our website because so far it's only been code, 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 but we can't really see anything on our website yet so let's add let's divert a little bit just so you can refresh your mind and not just not just look at code all the time yeah let's do that then we're going to after that we'll create a proper models system okay very nice so this is a complete almost complete framework and you can use it in other projects as well all right i'll see you in the next video where we start adding some html